This video is called The Intolerable King, and we're going to be looking at how and why the King of England clamped down on the colonists, and a little bit about what the colonists did to fight back. So, it begins by growing apart. For a long time, England ruled the American colonies without really any interaction at all, really not much going on. England pretty much left the colonists alone, and the colonists sort of did their own thing. Because of this, the colonists, even though they were part of England, they experienced freedoms from the crown that ordinary English citizens wouldn't have experienced. That changed in 1754 when England and France went to war against each other. This was called the French and Indian War. Part of the war took place in the colonies, and the colonists joined in the fight against France, against the French, since they were part of England. England also had to send soldiers to the colonies in order to fight this war. So for the first time, you actually have like a, an English military presence in the colonies fighting against the French. Um, obviously, after the war, those soldiers were still there, and they started to play a more involved role in colonial life. The king thought the colonists, because they participated in the war, part of the war was to defend their homes, they should have to share in the cost of the war. And um, He imposed a variety of new taxes on the colonists to raise revenue and that was going to cause some problems. See a little map here, and I know the resolution is low, but just look at the colors. You see this little purple section here? This is England's territory before the French and Indian War. The orange section, that is all French territory. So you see the French actually have a bigger presence in North America than the English did. Um, the French had to give up after the war. You see all this purple is now England. So England gets a lot of territory from France, and France is in this green section now. All right, moving on. The first issue between the colonists and the king after the French and Indian War was the proclamation of 1763. Obviously, you just saw the map. The colonists now have all this extra land because England gained all this land in victory over the French. England, however, forbid this movement with a law called the Proclamation of 1763. They set up a proclamation line, it was called, which basically went right between this dark pink and light pink section on the map here. And you, the law said you couldn't move past that line out west. Um, the reason for this law was England didn't want to anger Native Americans that were living out here. He, they wanted to repair that relationship. Had colonists move out there, there would have been conflicts. However, the colonies were getting crowded, and this law angered colonists who craved the open land in the west. And if you can look at it a little closer here. Here is the line right here. And even though all that light pink section is English territory, the colonists were not allowed to live there. Actually, Florida was not part of English territory, even though it's pink, but everything else was. Moving on to the next law that happened the year later called the Sugar Act. Um, like I said, the king thought the colonies should share in the cost of the war, so we put some revenue-raising taxes in place. The first one, or one of the first ones, called the Sugar Act. Um, this taxed sugar and other products. The price of those goods would have increased because the colonists would have had to pay the tax on it, and then that tax would have gone to help pay off the war debt. The law also limited the exportation of certain goods like lumber to only England. So say you were like a merchant and you made money trading with lots of different countries, this would have limited your money because you could only export those goods to England now. Um, this was one of the original protests against England. It happened actually not because of the, the, the reason behind the tax. It actually happened because the economy was bad and this act really hurt people. Uh, merchants in a bad economic time. The process did not center around the king really yet in 1764. That will change. Um, here's a cartoon with the king drinking his tea with sugar and kind of making fun of him. All right, the Stamp Act was next in 1765. Again, this was a revenue raising tax to help pay off the war debt. This law required colonists to pay a tax on any paper product, including stamps, that they um, would have used. Ships papers, legal documents, licenses, newspapers, anything that was paper would have been taxed. The law angered colonists because they didn't ha have any input in this law. England made the law and put it on place of the colonists, but the colonists had no representation. So this is the first time where the colonists used the famous saying, no taxation without representation. They weren't so mad about the actual effect of the tax like they had in the Sugar Act. This time they were mad about the fact that England could pass a tax without their um, input. And here is a, a picture of something they would use in a newspaper to protest the Stamp Act. Um, moving along to the following year, England passed another law that basically meddled in the colonists' lives called the Quartering Act in 1765. Um, this law basically said to the colonists, 
um, we need to put troops in your lands to you know, make you pay taxes. Now you also have to make the soldiers feel at home. You got to let them in your house. You got to feed them. You got to um, you know let them sleep there. They have no other place to sleep. So this one was really made the colonists mad, not because of money, but because of infringement on privacy. Um, you can picture, you can see here this this lady. She looks all mad, like she wants to beat the person out of her house with a broom. Go away! Get out of my house! You don't, I don't want you staying here, but she wouldn't have been allowed to beat him with a broom because of the quartering act. Um, this is the probably the most famous one, moving along in time into 1773, as this relationship between England and the colonies is getting worse and worse. Um, this one's called the Tea Act. England had a tea company, um, East India Company, that made tea. And the company was not doing well. They had all this extra tea and they needed a market. So England allowed the company to sell tea at a ridiculously low price to America, help the company make some money, get rid of their excess tea. It would really help the English tea company. However, if you were an American merchant who imported tea at a regular price, you would not be able to sell your tea because who would buy your tea for $5 when the East India Company was selling it for like 30 cents. So this was undercutting American merchants. Thus, a protest ensued. And you, see, you probably have heard of the Boston Tea Party, the famous protest against this act. Um, in many cases, British tea ships were sent back without allowing them to come into port. But the most famous one happened in Boston, where the Sons of Liberty dressed up as Native Americans and dumped thousands of dollars worth of British tea into the harbor. You can imagine that made the English king very, very upset with the colonies. Thus, the final straw in our story, the Intolerable Acts of 1774, this was issued in response to the Boston Tea Party. It was not meant as a revenue-raising um, law like some of the other ones were. It was meant as a punishment. This law did four things. It closed down Boston Harbor. If you were a merchant living in Boston, you had no job now because you could not bring ships in or out of the harbor. That was probably the most cr cruel of all parts of this law. It also shut down local governments. Town meetings were banned. England now had full control over the government in, in Massachusetts, which would anger people took away their liberty. Um, if you got arrested for a crime, they could now bring you to England for a trial where you'd probably get an extremely unfair trial. And of course, there's a new quartering act that renewed the old law. So these four things together are called the intolerable acts. And again, it was meant as a punishment, not as a revenue raising measure as the other ones were. So we covered a bunch of stuff in this video, a lot of different things. But just in conclusion, um, this all happened because of the French and Indian War. Colonists were living peacefully until this war happened, which caused the king to sort of pay attention to the colonies for the first time. Um, because the war cost money, new laws were passed by the king to raise revenue for the war. And because of protests and different things, the laws also supported the English companies, and you even saw one law that was passed as a punishment. The colonists resented these laws because they were, uh, they were used to their freedom. They were used to having their own say and having a lot more freedom than what they got after the French and Indian War. As more laws were passed, it did not solve the problem. It only made the problem worse, and they protested more. So you see it early on with the proclamation and with um, the Sugar Act. There, weren't, there were protests, but they got worse and worse, and you saw one of the last ones, the Boston Tea Party, was the worst one. Finally, the Intolerable Acts were the last straw. Um, you can see that that punishment was, was excessively cruel. Um, there was no repairing the relationship between the colonies and the king at that point. And in our next video, we're going to talk about some more of the protests and the preparations for war that will be beginning after the Intolerable Acts.